Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week on Formed. It is Monday, January 8th, the great feast of the baptism of our Lord. And, and it is a feast, so make sure you celebrate today that we... We're coming off the the heels of Epiphany. We celebrated that yesterday. And then the baptism of the Lord where... Jesus goes down to the waters of, of the Jordan River, does not need to be baptized for forgiveness of sin. He is sinless. He is God. But he allows himself to be numbered among sinners, numbered among transgressors, and the Holy Spirit comes down upon him, and we hear the wonderful words of the Father, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. And when he comes up uh, from the waters, that the Holy Spirit comes and descends in the form of a dove. This is a rare opportunity, Dr. Akers, where I get to correct you. Yeah, what is that? He doesn't say listen to him. Oh, he doesn't? That's the transfiguration. transfiguration? Okay. Are you sure one of the translations doesn't say that? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Let's just check this. I feel pretty good about this This one. is my beloved This son. would be one of, whom? with whom I am well pleased. I don't think, I think okay, listen the to listen him one is, one is the transfiguration. transfiguration. Which Friends, gospel then? Let it, let it be known. Let it, this needs, this start, day start needs this to be marked. Little, let me film this. <laughs> this is maybe the one time in two and a half years of making these. I need some more And coffee, I think I I'm guess. right. I'm like, not, uh, I, I'm uh, right. Yeah, I believe it. No, no, it's true. The transfiguration, the two places. Yeah. And the different references to the Old Testament that are, that are in Beloved that son is Isaac. Good. Yeah, Genesis uh, this 22. Is, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased is Isaac. Uh, listen this is my son, to Psalm, him. Psalm 110. Would oh, be like the, today the, I've begotten you. Yeah. Uh, wait, no, that's that Psalm 2. Uh, yeah. What no, Psalm, Psalm 110 says the same. It yeah, the, the, the okay. Melchizedek one. Yep. Yes. That was pretty good. They're but both the royal listen Psalm. to him. That, you're, are you saying that's an Old Testament reference or no? Yes, it is. Uh, nothing. Blank. Yeah, my will, please. Yeah. So the listen to him is or is not an Old Testament? Uh, yes, listen to him. It comes from uh, Deuteronomy. A reference to listen to the prophet that will come. Oh, nice. A prophet yeah, like Moses. So first, yeah. Deuteronomy 26? 24? Deuteronomy 18. All right. I was like yeah, not even that close. 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 But All right. great feast day. Great feast day. We have a lot to learn still in, uh, or I do, in, in <laughs> reflecting on the, <laughs> the baptism of our Lord. It's a great chance for us to, you know, when he goes to the waters of the Jordan River that he sanctifies all water. Water is now able to be used as a as an instrument uh, for God's grace. We have a lot about baptism. Uh, we have an entire series called Reborn. So if you've ever, you know, if you have a child that's going to be baptized sooner, if you just want to learn more about the sacrament, that's a great series. Uh, we also are, are really excited to partner with our friends at the Bible Project. They have a series on the baptism of Jesus. Uh, we have um, a series with Dr. John Seahorn and... Father Isaac Morales, uh, called the Bible and Baptism, and they have the Baptism of Jesus. Th that one's a little bit more scholarly. And as I was going to say, like, but it's for those who want to go different and deeper, and I need yeah. to clearly watch it, but it's the rooting, uh, especially in Scripture, Father Isaac Morales is a Dominican priest who wrote a book mm -hmm. on the biblical theology of the sacraments, uh, biblical theology of the sacrament of baptism. And so mm -hmm. Dr. John Seahorn, our academic dean, is is the um, one of the general editors of that series. And so uh, they have this great conversation about it. Uh, and we have another, I think this is our final for the season one of Drawing Closer to God coming out too. So that's a drawing show for your kids. Just search Drawing Closer to God if you haven't looked, uh, if you haven't watched it yet, but it's a great show for kids anywhere from two to 13. Uh, it teaches how to draw, it teaches a little bit of theology. It's it's fun. It's a great series. And we have a new series for families mm -hmm. that's coming out next week. We do. You want to talk more about it? I do. It's called The Catholic Parent. We're really excited about it. Um, it's a six episode series. It's built on the precepts of the church of go to mass, take your family to mass, go to confession, pray as a family, hand on the faith, fast as a family, and give alms. Hmm. Those are, the, um, but it's the it's a really great series. I uh, am a an adult convert to the faith, and my wife and I have been blessed with kids. Uh, and as we had kids get just a little bit older, we were really kind of like, what do we do? What does it mean to be a Catholic parent? Um, and I'm very fortunate here at the Augusta Institute to have people like Ben and many other people in the building who have been Catholic parents for a long time that I get to ask all my questions to. Um, but that is not the case for everyone. This series is supposed to really be an aid for any of you out there that are looking to be and or just are Catholic parents. And what does it mean? It's supposed to, it's, it's, like a very honest series. It doesn't hide the difficulties or the challenges, but uh, we're really excited about it. It comes out on January 15th. Yeah, check out the trailer, uh, give you yeah. a teaser on that. And these are gonna be short episodes, is that right? Yeah, like they're 15, between 20 yep, minutes. 15 minutes. 
and there's there's te- there's priests, there's religious, religious sisters that are speaking along with real life families, as you mentioned. Yep. That Stories from the lives of married saints. Yep. Um, yeah. It's a great series. It is. And the trailer will make you laugh. I promise. It will. Yeah. So take him up on his word. You got to you got to go watch it. On Saturday, January thirteenth, we celebrate Saint Hilary of Poitiers. Poitiers. Yes, and uh, he was an early church in, in the relatively in the early church, fourth fifth century. Um, was uh, combated Arianism, and in France, and so we actually have a, a, a series of conversations on heresies. Yes, it, it looks like a daunting thumbnail when you see this thing. You're like, I don't know if I want to click on that. It looks kind of scary. Yeah, uh, but heresies are scary, right? It's it's a distortion of the truth. It's a tearing away of particular teaching of the the truth. And Arianism is one of the early church's uh, greatest challenges. Um, it looked as if most of the world, most of the church, believed in the Arian heresy that Jesus was not God. Mm-hmm. It's very powerful but wasn't fully God. Yeah. And Athanasius is a great defender of it, and St. Hilary is also a great defender of it. Um, and w- something that's really cool about that whole series is towards the end of the episode, uh, Dr. Mooney talks about how that heresy, which is, it's very, that Arianism is very ancient, but he talks about how it still is with us today. It just is called by different names, which is, I, I think, quite enlightening to listen to. All righty. Plenty more on the foreign platform. So if this is helpful to you, you know, we have a liturgical calendar. So if you've not explored, you know, scroll down past the first three or four stripes on form, keep going down. And we actually have a liturgical calendar where our team has curated the content for each feast day. Mm -hmm. So if we have content related to that particular saint, we put it in that spot. So that helps you if you're doing religious education, uh, maybe you're working the RCIA, the OCIA programs to, to curate content for the people that you're serving. That's right. All right. Get formed. Get watching.